businesses. Like my colleagues, I've heard from parents, small businesses, state officials, and even children about the devastation that illicit fentanyl has inflicted on Delaware communities and families. In 2020, more than 80% of the overdose deaths in Delaware involved fentanyl. And provisional data from 2021 suggests that we may be on track for another record-breaking year. This underscores how important it is that we get these policies right. And the last time that the acting director of the Office of National Drug Control Policy was before this committee, I highlighted my concerns from previous approaches to drug control that were rooted in stigma and punishment and not public health. And as a result, Congresswoman Custer and I introduced the Stop Fentanyl Act, a comprehensive package of public health policies to address the proliferation of synthetic opioids like fentanyl related substances. I want to thank the witnesses um, who have provided feedback on our bill and hope that we continue to work together. Um, Mr. Millon, in 2020, we tragically lost over 93,000 people to drug overdoses. Based on the most updated data you have, can you tell us how many overdose deaths were caused, not just present, but caused by fentanyl related substances? Can you use your microphone, please? I apologize. That's all right. Um, thank you for the question. I believe that the number is 70,000 of the 100,000, but I'd want to confirm with the colleagues on okay. the panel, but it is a, a, a massive number that's uh, the vast majority are attributed to the fentanyl, fentanyl overdose deaths. And does the DEA have surveillance systems in place to understand how many overdose deaths are attributed to fentanyl and illicitly manufactured fentanyl, including fentanyl analogs? and related substances? We work, we do work with our interagency partners to try to collect that information. We, we, I, there's always more to do in those partnerships uh, across the health community and with the science community. Um, so we're, we're moving in that direction with our current administrator, uh, Ann Milgram, who's very much focused in those heat maps and how better to understand Great. where the threats are. Great, thank you. And Dr. Th uh, Throckmorton, has the United States ever implemented a class-wide schedule based solely on structure of a substance. Thank you, yes, we have. The, the, the best recent example would be the androgenic steroids, which are, class of, which, are, which are scheduled as a class based on structure. And is it possible to tell if a substance would lead to opioid-related harms by just looking at the structure? Thank you, no, it is absolutely not possible to do that yet. Structure gives us one piece, and it is an important piece. We think it's sufficient to identify compounds at high risk of being dangerous substances in the, in the FRS class, but that's why we're recommending the, the, the potential for using other, other testing, the pharmacologic testing that we're proposing in the uh, in the Biden administration proposal, because we believe that's, that those kinds of data are necessary to, to fully understand whether a, a product is going to be dangerous or whether, in fact, it is lot less dangerous or not dangerous at all and should be eligible for research more easily. Thanks. And, and a structural definition of fentanyl-related substances could potentially classify thousands of substances as Schedule One drugs under the Controlled Substance Act without knowing whether they are addictive or have potential medical use. Um, what could be some of the consequences of that? Well, I, I think I share your concern, but I think the proposal as it's laid out addresses that in the right, in the right balance. It, it recognizes the emergency that we face with this class of dangerous compounds, uses a structure-based mechanism to place them under control so that the DEA can, can, can make sure that they're not available, but then also puts in place a mechanism to remove them quickly from that scheduling if the data show that they are not dangerous. I, I think that balance really is the right approach to take here. It, it, it affords the greatest public health protection while still protecting the need to be able to support the research of compounds that, that, are, not, that are not like oxycodone, that are not like fentanyl, that have have, have less danger. Right, and could potentially, maybe there's a, some kind of um, cure or thing that we could use like naloxone or other things. Um, Mr. Tester, uh, representatives from the criminal justice and civil rights communities believe that a class-wide scheduling would remove the prosecutorial burden to prove that a substance has a psychoactive effect similar to fentanyl. And I know my time is up, so if maybe as a follow-up, if we could comment on that concern. 
And I, if, if I don't know, Madam Chair, I think we have votes. So I'm going to ask if you could submit that in writing to us. And I'm going to say thank you so much for your answers. And I yield back my time.